Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I greet you with the greetings of peace, respected brothers and sisters, in the spirit, brothers and sisters, and honored guests in humanity. First and foremost, uh, thank you so much uh, to uh, our local Kingston partners for uh, supporting us in this tour and uh, coming in, uh, you know, uh, working very hard in getting this event together. So I'm very grateful and I'd just like to get applause for all of them first before we start. And ultimately, thanks to all of you for giving us uh, your time. Um, unprecedented times that we all live in so it's not lost on my family neither on the Fakiri or the shared family that how grateful we are for you to coming and giving us your time my dear friends and brothers and sisters in humanity my message is simple tempered with conviction with passion with a determination to stand against injustice but before I start my speech I want everybody to know that the standards of the loved ones that we lost and should be different standards in how our family articulate our story and how we fight. Rather, our standard, our perspective, our pursuit of justice should be tempered with dignity, humility, and firm determination in building that better society. That is to say, how do you want history to remember us? Do we use the same standard? Of course we don't, ladies and gentlemen because we want history to remember us with our dignity, but also with conviction and honor. These terms, we must remain steadfast in our pursuit, no matter how difficult that the tragedy is. And this is very important. So we must always use, always use a different standard because in order for us to inspire, we must aspire to inspire. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. My dear friends, let's talk about Suleiman's life. You, you heard a little bit about it, but I just want to add some more details uh, before I talk about this movement and I talk about other families. Suleiman was a gifted mind, both intellectually and academic, both intellectually and athletically. Uh, the man spoke three languages, as my dear brother Adnan said, the third being one of the hardest language, which was Arabic, and he taught his own mother, and he taught me how to pray. But beyond that, more than that, Suleiman was a brother. He was an uncle, he was a son. He transcended what mental illness was effectively. He never allowed the illness define him. Rather, he was the very example of strength, of courage. And that's the legacy that we've built on as a family. We are better people today because of him. And so one humble request from all of you that I ask today, I know every single one of you has someone near and dear to you suffering from mental illness. Remember, they don't choose the illness. They have so many gifts. So the best thing you can do is treat them with compassion and treat and understand to listen. And this is very important. And Suleiman literally showed my family that. And that's something that we continue to miss and we never forget. And the one final thing before I talk, you know, before I talk about the, the violent end to his life, you know, in terms of who he was, one of the things that my mother did, um, and I come from a community, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we're proud Canadians uh, that grew up in Pickering, Ontario. You know, we came here as refugees from the Middle East, and um, um, I, myself, my own community, we struggle in our treatment of mental illness. But something incredible happened. Uh, at the tender age of 19, when Suleiman was diagnosed with this illness known as schizophrenia, my mom took in my entire family with my father and got us all in a room and said, you're gonna treat my son for the way who he is. And that's because of who Suleiman was. Not let the illness define him. And this is a very important message, ladies and gentlemen, for us to remember. My mom, through her unconventional love, unflinching and unwavering love, taught my mom how to treat, truly treat her son in the way that he should be treated, and that's through love. Yet it took the justice system 11 days. It took her 11 years to, to keep him and let, have him, you know, have a thrived life. Yet it took the justice system 11 days for him to be killed under their care. Think about that. 11 years versus 11 days. 11 ans contre 11 jours. It's interesting, quand même, non? And this is a fundamental problem, ladies and gentlemen that we have to ask. 
And the reason, you know, that we have to ask this question, and I'm sorry to say this, as a nation, we have a fundamental problem, fundamental problem in the treatment of individuals suffering from mental illness. And the reason why we have so many individuals suffering from mental illness that have died as a result of the justice system is effectively clear. It's because their lives are cheap. Their lives are cheap. People who suffer from mental illness, their lives are viewed as cheap. And it is up to us as Canadians and individuals across from all walks of life, across all individuals in this station, you know, settling in this country and, you know, in, these soci in this society, we must say enough is enough. And this is very important. There will be more people suffering from mental illness that will die as a result of the justice system, and it's up to us to change that system. So let's talk about Suleiman's the violent end to his life. Uh, my niece already mentioned some things, but I want to hit things more home here for us to understand. A 30-year-old man was killed under government care by taxpayer-funded guards uh, that were at the custodian of the state. Um, Suleiman, at the time of his death, both his legs and his hands were tied. He was pepper sprayed twice. And there was 50 bruises on his body as 12 guards took turns beating him to death. He was in segregation the whole time and he was pepper sprayed twice. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to ask our a fundamental question is what kind of society do we want to truly live in when a man who's suffering from a fundamental mental health crisis is given to his family in a body bag and is killed by the individuals the very individuals that are supposed to take care of him that's on a, that's shameful and that's horrible but there's another fundamental question we have to ask ourselves is when we don't have the procedures of the of of, of the respective society in itself not being respected. For example, three days before Suleiman's death, another level of government, another branch actually, not even a level of government, a separate branch of government, that is to say the judiciary. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bore everybody with a certain, you know, these terms, but from a political perspective, the, the, the judiciary is different from the executive. So the, an Ontario judge ordered Suleiman to be transferred to a hospital three days before his killing. But he never made it, ladies and gentlemen. He never made it because the guards that killed him did not respect the order of the judge. Instead, they gave Suleiman and a body bag to my mother. Instead, they've put my family through grief for the last four years, almost four years. They said, here you go. Take him. It's your problem now. Bury him. Do whatever you want with him. That is what effectively they did for my family. But we said, and we made a decision as a family, where we said we had a very simple but a very we had a simple route to go but a very difficult decision to make and that was we chose to fight we chose to honor Suleiman we chose to be the voices to the voice and it's the same kind of work that our, my dear sister here Angela Voss is doing for her beloved son we chose to fight because we have no choice we have to fight ladies and gentlemen we have to fight Justice for Sully! 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 Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, we will not stop until we attain justice for Suleiman Fikiri and every other individual suffering from mental illness within the justice system. Aucune erreur, mesdames et messieurs. On va, on va commencer et continuer sans arrêt jusqu'à la façon qu'on trouve de justice. Sans arrêt. Sans arrêt. Without full stop. We will continue to fight for justice, ladies and gentlemen. I've said a few words, ladies and gentlemen, in French because I want our Canadians, I want individuals across this nation to understand mental illness does not discriminate on race, ethnicity, socioeconomic background. It touches all of us. So I want people to hear this, right? And so. Let's talk about the case itself, of what happened, and, and just quickly. The local police investigated the local jail, and after a year-long investigation, the Quarter Lakes Police Service decided to not press charges against the guards who killed Suleiman. It came out that the Quarter Lakes Police Service never spoke with the eyewitness that saw uh, Suleiman's killing. 
And it was only the fifth estate that found Mr. John Thiebaud where it came out that he saw everything. One of the words of Mr. John Thiebaud was that uh, one of the guards actually literally had his knee on his neck. These were the last of my brother's life, ladies and gentlemen. My beautiful brother, who I went to many difficulties with, who I loved incredibly, who was near and dear to all of us. These were his last few minutes, ladies and gentlemen. There's a fundamental problem and issue when a man who's suffering from a severe mental illness, where individuals that are working to be the vanguards of the state, to be the best example of the state, to be, to be the example of compassion, is what they do is they kill that person. They react. And if you want to learn more about Suleiman's story in the case itself, feel free to go on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our fight has continued and we will not stop. Let me talk about, ladies and gentlemen, I want to, you know, there's a lot to talk about the case, but I want to, for the purpose of time, I wanted to just leave it there. The mandate of the Justice for Sunni movement is very simple. It's inspired by these three words, transparency, accountability, and the pursuit of justice. We must call out this system for what it is, this opaque system that, is, that has a lack of transparency and a lack of accountability because we deserve justice. Canadians across the nation deserve justice. Any human life that's taken deserves justice. And that's what the movement's about, to get justice for Suleiman. And second, just as importantly, is to get justice for everyone else who suffered from mental illness that died as a result of the justice system. At the end of my presentation, I'm going to mention a bunch of names, just so you know why, I'm, why this fight is so important. Why this fight isn't just about my late beautiful brother. Why this fight is literally life and death, ladies and gentlemen. Why this fight is that our future generation will count on us. Why this fight is that we must lay the seeds for a better tomorrow. We must cultivate, we must cultivate that flower to blossom for a better tomorrow. We must understand is what do we want our future generation to look at us and how we stand for justice. Do we take it for what it is? Do we let more tragedies pass or do we say enough is enough? Est-ce que c'est suffisant? We must ask ourselves, what kind of a society do we want to build? What kind of society do we want to inspire? That's why this fight is so important because this isn't about one change or another. This is about lives that we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. This is about anguish and pain that families go through every day. This isn't about a mistake. This is about individuals being buried and as if their lives are cheap. That's what we're fighting. That's why you're here today. That's why Canadian individuals across this nation are standing with us. Because that's what it's about. We have to continue to inspire through our collective grief. It's a hard fight. It's a difficult fight. But it is an inspirational fight, and it is a fight that must happen. It's an obligation on all of us. C'est une obligation à tout le monde à cette, cette voyage de trouver de justice. It's important on all of us, ladies and gentlemen. That's what this movement's about, and that's why we're working on a collective. Today is the third stop in our tour. We gave, we were in Lindsay, we launched our tour today, man. Our dear brother Jordan lost his life. We were in Toronto South last week. We're in Kingston today. Frontenac County Forty Courthouse. Courthouse. This is supposed to be the symbol of justice, right? Then we ask ourselves, is what we call what do we call the symbol of justice when individuals with mental illness are being killed without the in the justice system that are that are suffering from mental illness, but there's no accountability. That's a question that you have to reflect, ladies and gentlemen. Our tour continues in Ottawa in a couple of weeks. We have tours planned in London, Montreal, Hamilton, and we will not stop until we achieve justice for Suleiman and other and all individuals suffering from mental illness, including Jordan Shear.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to end off my speech with a couple of things here. Note that the fight continues today, it does not end today. Rather, the fight and the journey continues because the better tomorrow will never be, will never be dreamed or achieved until we build that society where accountability and transparency is achieved. Know that. And know that this work, this work is fundamentally important. And know that it will be through our collective grief, our energy, our passion, our determination. There will be ups and downs. But that's the test in this life, ladies and gentlemen. That is the very test in life. Before I say a couple of things, before I end my presentation here, you know, uh, I come from the most Islamic faith. Um, in our faith, we have a tradition where it says, no soul will be tested more than it could bear. And all the beautiful traditions has that in one shape or form. No soul will be tested more than it can bear. We are being tested, ladies and gentlemen. We are being tested to decide, do we mind our own business and do what we want to do and fulfill our own desires? Or do we take the high road and inspire change and build that tomorrow? That is up to you, ladies and gentlemen. And it's only up to you. Because if we don't, that build better tomorrow will never be attained. I love Suleiman dearly. We used to say to each other, I love you. We used to kiss each other in each other's forehead. There's days I long for him. I miss him incredibly. But my pain pales in comparison to my mother or my father or Angela Voss, who's lost her own child, who buried their own child, who fed milk to their children, or to the mother of Sean Spaulding, or Pierre Corleone, or Justin saint amour Lives are counting, ladies and gentlemen. So let me start with the names that have suffered at the hands of the justice system that's suffering from mental illness before I ended off with a quote. And there's many more than just this what I'm giving you, ladies and gentlemen. Errol Green, Winnipeg. Edward Snowshoe, Edmonton. Tony Du, Vancouver. Jermaine Carby, Mississauga. Regis Korczynski, Paquette, Mississauga. Andrew Loku, Toronto. Pierre Corleone, Montréal, Dondre Campbell, Brampton, Rodney Levy, Kings, uh, Vancouver, Suleiman Fikiri, Lindsay, Justin Saint Amour, Ottawa, Cass Geddes, Ottawa, Jordan Sherrod, Lindsay, Matthew Hines, New Brunswick, Abdurrahman Abdi, Ottawa, Moses Amick Beaver, Thunder Bay, Chantal Moore, Edmondson, New Brunswick, and Ajaz Chowdhury, Mississauga. Fathers, sons, daughters, mothers, all were giving in body bags to their loved ones to never be seen again. You know what the common denominator in all these individuals are, ladies and gentlemen? They all suffered from one shape, form of mental illness. And these names are across the nation. They're not just an Ontario problem. This is a Canadian problem, and we must put a stop. We must honor all these names, and we will continue to honor these names because that's why this fight is important. C'est pour ça, c'est pour ça, c'est important pour trouver justice pour tout le monde à cette fois-ci. I leave you with these two quotes, ladies and gentlemen, for us to reflect. The first one, they're both given by statesmen that saw injustice happening to them, and I know most of you knew who they are. The first quote, and they're actually from the same country. Um, the first quote is, the greatest measure of a society is how a society treats its most vulnerable. The greatest measure of a society is how a society treats its most vulnerable. Last Saturday was Nelson Mandela Day. That was Nelson Mandela's quote. I'll leave you with this other quote. If you're neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If you're neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of, of the oppressor. Ladies and gentlemen, we must act now to stand for the voiceless. 
We must act now to stand against injustice, against individuals suffering from mental illness. It is our duty and our obligation. What do we want history to remember us as a conformist or as individuals that inspire change? What do we want our kids and our generation to remember us? That is up to you. That is up to you to change. And that is an obligation on all of you. My heart is broken. I continue to suffer as the rest of my family, just like the shared family. But we will fight. We will fight through conviction, through passion, through determination, and through a persistence that's tempered with value and honor that, that is much more inspiring than the individuals that took our loved ones, that killed them. We will achieve justice. Make no mistake. On va trouver la justice. On va trouver la justice.